We both love Salt and Sanctuary. So when we heard that a spiritual successor was on the horizon, we knew we had to play. We'll take any reason to play a souls like cooperatively and Salt and Sacrifice was just the excuse we needed. Just try not to get salty with each other on date night. Oh my God, are you okay? The best way I can explain Salt and Sacrifice to a newcomer is that it's kind of like if Dark Souls and Monster Hunter had a baby. The catch being that Salt and Sanctuary stole that baby at birth and then raised it to be a Metroidvania with some salt. So you might want to get over here because as soon as it pops up, we need to just start swinging. <laughs> it's a bat. I like, was it? I just started. Like a heart attack over a bat. Yes. If you're like me, then you probably went into Sacrifice thinking it was gonna be just like the first game. It didn't take long for me to do a 180 on that though. It turned out to be a lot different than the previous installment, but it still managed to keep the charm the first one had. Even though it's a different experience, some things just never change. I don't know any- oh god, I already forgot that. Playing this game with my boyfriend is quite the ordeal. Basically what happens is we start a hunt for a mage and have to pursue it back to its nest. Okay, easy peasy. What's the big deal? Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. The issue is my boyfriend can't stay on task and will find about a zillion other things to do instead of hunting the stupid mage. Wait a minute. Where- do I know where I am? Yes, you do, because we can't go in that door yet. We need to kill a mage. Oh, we're on one right now. Oh yeah, I forgot. What's worse is that another mage shows up on the hunt and he'll just decide he wants to go after that one instead. Nothing like blowing through an entire tool belt of supplies fighting a monster that's pretty inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. The upgrade materials are much appreciated though because neither of us have a clue what we want to build our characters around in this one. I like to go knee deep into the weapon class and the skill tree and then decide maybe I want to try something new. My favorite thing about trying out a new game is how excited everything makes us. Yeah, bitch! Nice. I'm taking your heart and I'm eating it! She's hungry, bruh. I'm hungry! Every time we kill a new mage, it's a race back to camp in order to see what we can craft from its parts. Half the time, we end up making stuff we never even end up using. The reality is, upgrading equipment and farming materials was less about getting stronger equipment and more in the name of just seeing what things did. Whoa! How? Did you do three? In the same sense, crafting is a much bigger deal in this game than the previous one. When enemies die, they're always dropping stuff, and it's my biggest vice to try and pick up the shinies in the heat of the combat. Ah, I want oh the shinies. God. Oh god, I'm getting ganked. Okay. Let me grab I'm just gonna come down and help you out. She's so busy with the shinies. It's not the end of the world if I oh. die trying to get loot, but god help me if my boyfriend ends up carding because I went off the offensive in order to mine a rock. There's a lot of bad shit down here. Like, oh my. Okay, I'm dead. The cooperative chaos during a boss fight is still in full effect. I don't know what else to call it because I've been playing a ton of Dark Souls, but when you reverse Halloween, you can actually resurrect your partner if they die. I'm not dead. Well, nothing is, you know, I put, I'm not dead. On paper, this sounds really good because it's kind of like having a couple extra lives in a boss fight. But what really happens is that one person dies and the other gets so caught up with trying to resurrect them that they just start getting hit left and right. He'd probably be better off just focusing on the boss and leaving me crumbled up in the corner. But we agreed, no girlfriends left behind. If we go down, we go down together. The dramatic fall. That was so dramatic. Boom. Wow. <laughs> One of the biggest blows to our salt of date nights is the absence of the once great and mighty pause button. In Salt and Sacrifice, we opted to play remotely, and so it was with a heavy heart that I had to say goodbye to my favorite playstyle. I always thought he'd have to pry that pause button from my cold, dead hands, but the first step to quitting is admitting you have a problem. Hey. This is an intervention. There actually was an option to play locally, but anyone who's tried doing that while using the new grappling hooks will tell you, it'll have some negative effects on your relationship. I missed. Well, at least we're close <laughs> to an obelisk. The good news is, now that we aren't tethered to each other, a whole world of possibilities opens up. Although I feel like I'm constantly getting lost. It's too bad that there are no scout flies to follow in Salt's universe. I'm still learning the names of all these places, so when I ask him for directions, it's kind of like being in a foreign country and not knowing the language. It sometimes feels like we're trying to divide and conquer by going in two different directions, but what's really happening is I'm off exploring the same cave we've been to a dozen times like it's my first visit, while he's locating the next obelisk which will convene Conveniently warp me right to him when he rests at it. Oh, hey, Taryn, there was a bonfire over here. <laughs> oh my god! Is this where I went? I what the hell just happened? I just warped you too. 
Oh my god, thank you! That was so helpful, it freaked me out, but thank you. The teleporting to the obelisk is both a blessing and a curse. Most of the time, he sits down at that thing and it's just like he pulled a cord on my parachute or something, because it saves me from whatever shitstorm I found myself involved in. But the other half of the time, it seems like he always sits at the same exact moment that I'm about to loot a shiny. I don't care that I don't know what half the crafting materials are for. I need that extra dopamine hit from collecting an item to keep me going. Shiny! All this talk about the new stuff, and I completely forgot to talk about the main villain of the game. Fall damage. I have been falling for 30 minutes! I'm just as bad at not dying to gravity as the day I became a saltborn. This ends up becoming a single player game for my boyfriend when there's a section with lots of platforming to it. Don't tell him this. But sometimes I throw my jumps on purpose so that I can run to the bathroom. Also, I might hold some kind of distinction for being the only player in the game to have died in the hub area. The co-op experience of Salt and Sacrifice was a great way for the two of us to experience the game together for the first time. I'm sure he'll be playing through it a dozen more times on his own with a bunch of self-imposed challenges that if you ask me, make the game more of a chore than a toy. But we both agree, nothing beats sitting down as a couple at the end of a busy week to desalinate a little bit. Nice. I definitely uh, think I might have softened them up a little bit though, <laughs> just saying, I don't know. I think you did. And besides, it will never stop being funny seeing the other person end up obliterated. <laughs> Thank you.